Good evening, all. Uh, I'm uh, the Lakmal Isuru, uh, the chairman of the Building Search Engineering Section Committee. Uh, first of all, sorry to uh, say that uh, I'm not in a position to uh, on my video uh, because it's my, uh, my uh, technical error of my device. Uh, sorry for that for you all. So anyway, so so we are going to start uh, uh, the webinar number three organized by the Building Service Engineering Section Committee for the session 2022-2023. So, uh, so it is basically the, the advanced waste water treatment uh, uh, the topic uh, uh, area we are covering. So our distinguished uh, uh, lecturer engineer Surat. Uh, so, uh, so actually uh, uh, introduce about the building service section committee. Uh, uh, it is uh, one of the uh, uh, sectional committee uh, being performed uh, during the first years in the ISA. So our, our mainly targeting of the, uh, the building services engineering practices in Sri Lanka. So, so having said that, uh, so this is one of the, our uh, uh, main task to deliver to the public by doing the, this kind of the webinar before it is public lectures and giving the best service to the society. So uh, with that thought, uh, I warmly welcome uh, to the all participants and as well as our distinguished uh, lecturer for this webinar number three organized by the Building Service Section Committee. So from here on, we will start this session. So I will invite engineer Kaushal Patirana, who's the representative uh, member of Building Service Engineering Section Committee and the uh, task, uh, course, uh, task leaders of the webinar team to uh, start this session. Uh, engineer Kaushal, this is over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Hope you guys can hear me. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kaushal Patrina, and I warmly welcome you all to the third webinar uh, organized by the Building Service Engineering Sectional Committee uh, for the session 2022 and 2023. Uh, today's webinar will be a quite interesting one. Our topic is um, Advanced Wastewater Treatment for Modern Facilities. Okay. Can you live a day without water? I bet. Nobody can. Clean water is one of the rarest and most critical for human existence in the planet Earth. However, what are the common words that we are hearing in this context? Reuse, less usage, save for next generation, isn't it? But who's responsible for polluting the water? Yeah, that means all of us. Various human activities pollute water and create wastewater, which can be catastrophic to all flora and fauna, sometimes even to us as well. Then it must be treated before releasing it to the environment. There are various treatment methods available and uh, being used for But uh, how to optimize the treatment methods, but uh, by creating it more affordable, uh, lower maintenance, high energy efficient, all engineers have to play a role uh, to overcome these challenges and with uh, some practical approach. Okay, let's find out in a while. Today's objective of the webinar is to introduce high-end wastewater treatment technologies to reduce footprints, which we left as humans. Thank you all for joining with us and let me introduce our speaker today. Engineer Surat Senviratna was graduated from University of Peradeni with a BSc in Chemical Engineering and has also obtained MBA from University of West London, UK. He is well experienced and carries a great exposure in many building service engineering sectors. Further, he has served in many organizations and worked for both local and overseas projects. Currently, he runs his own business. Um, Enviro Water System, System Private Limited, which is mainly focused on water and wastewater treatment system. Well, Engineer Surat is a well-known figure in, the, in this uh, field and also share his knowledge as a resource person for several professional forums as well. Having collaborated with many professionals in the field, Engineer Surat is actively contributing to save the nature and grow the building industry for a cleaner Sri Lanka. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, without any further excitement, please join with me to welcome our speaker tonight, Engineer Surat Senivirata. And one more thing, I would like to remind you that uh, there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So you can post all your questions to uh, our moderator by selecting the moderator uh, in chat box. So then after that, we will do all your question to the speaker at the end of the presentation. Let's move on to the, what are you in this today? Thank you, Kaushal. Thank you for your nice introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Surat Seneviratna. Today we are going to talk about one of the advanced technologies in wastewater treatment. <clears throat> Before I start the session, I would like to thank organizers for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge with you. And also I would like to welcome all participants to this knowledge sharing session on behalf of uh, organizers. I am sure that most of you, most of you have a good knowledge about wastewater treatment, but considering less knowledgeable participants, I will keep this session as simple as possible. Before moving to the advanced wastewater technologies, I think it is better to brief conventional and some modern treatment methods. As you may know, there are two types of wastewater. First one is domestic wastewater, and second one is industrial wastewater. Domestic wastewater means wastewater which is coming out from toilet flushing, washing sinks, bathing, kitchen and washing machines. Maybe it's come from home or apartments, hotel or hospital, or sometimes it's in, from office complex. Different industries produce different wastewater. As an example, food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, textile, and automobile industries, those wastewater we introduce as industrial wastewater. Though it is domestic or industrial, can we discharge wastewater directly into the environment? As both you and I know, answer is no. We know the reason, reasons also. Therefore, we have to select correct treatment method then. It should be safely discharged method into the environment. Before moving on to the next slide, I would like to recall some common terms used in wastewater industry. You may heard about night soil. Night soil means human waste collected from laboratories. Gray water, with wastewater that has been used for washing, laundering, bathing, or showering. Black water, any waste from toilets or urinals. Sewage, wastewater from 
kitchen, bathrooms, and lavatories. We can say both gray and black water. Sewerage. Sewerage is the infrastructure which contains pipes, pumps, and other equipment used for the transportation, collection, and pumping of sewage is known as sewerage. One of you may ask, if my wastewater has no color or odor, needs to be purified. My answer is, need to be checked. Most of you know, before discharge any wastewater, as Kaushal said earlier, we have to purify that. But we want to understand the existing water quality or existing quality of our wastewater. Therefore, it is better to get an idea about the quality by analyzing wastewater sample. Most of you know the general conditions of domestic wastewater. It means black and gray water, but analyzing of industrial wastewater is compulsory. After analyzing the wastewater sample, You can understand what are the parameters and what are the levels of the wastewater. Normally, if it is domestic wastewater, we have a general idea. But if, we say, if it is industrial wastewater, we have to get good knowledge about that by considering there are some parameters. Before move on to those parameters, I think uh, it is my responsibility to pay your attention to Yeah, BOD, biochemical oxygen demand. Biochemical oxygen demand is required amount of oxygen that used by aerobic, aerobic microorganism when decomposing organic matters in water. Then COD, chemical oxygen demand. Chemical oxygen demand is the measure of the capacity of the water to consume oxygen during decomposing organic matters in water. TSS, total suspended solids. Waterborne suspended particles in water that is not dissolved and can be trapped by filter. It may be two micron or above in size. 
TDS, total dissolved solids, particle dissolved in water and smaller than two micron in size. Coliform, collection of different, different kind of bacteria. E. coli, subgroup of fecal coliform. This is a small technical error. Okay. Although only a few parameters are considered while discussing domestic, maximum parameters should be found in industrial wastewater in order to design correct wastewater treatment plant. If come back again to the topic, after analyzing and understanding the wastewater quality, the level of purification should be determined. According to the regulations, it depends on where the treated water discharged. As an example, if you are going to release treated wastewater to inland surface waters, it is need to treat up to recommended level and should release to flow in water body containing enough water for one to eight dilution. According to the table shown, recommended level of inland surface water and gardening are same. Irrigation and marine water levels are higher than inland surface waters, but lower than the level of public sewer network. On discharging to road canals, if it joins flowing water body where it can be diluted one to eight, industrial, sorry, inland surface water level is acceptable. But if not, they need to dilute by adding fresh water or treat up to diluted level. For reuse, it is not defined. There is no regulation. However, it depends on the purpose of reuse. Now, we know the water quality and we know the level we have to purify. Then we should select the suitable method While choosing the treatment method, the right pretreatment should also be decided. Pretreatment is the removal of specific pollutants from the wastewater 
before mixing it with the main wastewater stream. First one is screening. It is essential first unit of wastewater treatment. It prevents entering of coarse materials, inorganic materials, which can blockage the pipelines. Sachet packets, sanitary pads, foam, condoms, toothbrush are examples. Then second, grid separation. Grid removal is used to prevent of entering gravel, grit, fine sand, as well as fiber, etc., which can be deposited in pipelines. Oil separation. Simple oil and grease removal mechanism is oil trap, which works on water and oil density factor. If there is huge oil collection, oil skimmers can be used to remove oil from calm water surface, especially in the coconut industries. Oil traps are not working. If so, we have to go for oil skimmers. Dissol layer flotation. Dissol layer flotation is used to remove oil and grease, suspended solids, sometimes BOD and COD, and some metals also. Diffuse, pressurized air is supported to this process. By adding flocculant and coagulant, protein and carbon hydrate also can be separated. Then primary clarifier. Especially in chemical industries or textile industries, we have to remove solid particles, suspended particles from the wastewater. We use primary clarifier to separate solid and liquid. Concentrated Concentrated impurities can be converted to solid and liquid by using chemicals. Now we are moving to main treatment method. Method number one, anaerobic aerobic combined treatment. Here, we use anaerobic bacteria as well as aerobic bacteria for the biological process. Just discuss one by one. First step of the treatment unit is equalization. Equalization is used to homogenization the wastewater of different strength and effectively resist shock loads. After equalization tank, it flows to anaerobic digester. Anaerobic digester provided favorable conditions to anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria live in oxygen free environment. Anaerobic digester can digest wastewater up to 6 to 70 percent. Therefore, we need secondary treatment facility like aeration. Aeration. After anaerobic treatment, wastewater flows to aerobic digester. Aerobic bacteria live in oxygen rich environment, need to supply oxygen by external source, need to maintain dissolved oxygen level in the reactor between one to three milligram per liter. Then 
secondary clarifier. The aerated water come out from aeration tank is separated to solid and liquid at the secondary clarifier. Supernant flows out and precipitated sludge at the bottom is frequently returned or waste. Finally, we should disinfect the wastewater. The treated water after secondary clarifier need to disinfect. It may be chlorine, ozone or UV sterilizer. After the entire treatment, water is achieved the level of inland surface waters from this treatment method. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Anaerobic required high land area. 60 to 70% is treated within anaerobic. Therefore, power consumption is less. As well as sludge production, also very less. And anaerobic bacteria compact the sludge bed. Therefore, you don't want to discharge sludge frequently. Then we move to treatment method number two. It is extended aeration. You can see now anaerobic part is not there. Therefore, entire treatment need to be completed by aeration. Since no anaerobic aeration tanks become big, but, but construction cost is less. Oxygen requirement is higher than the previous because total treatment has to do by aeration. Therefore, power consumption is high. Such also needs to be discharged very frequently. Now move to treatment method three. SBR treatment, C sequence batch reactor. You can see no anaerobic, no secondary clarifier. Entire process take place in one reactor tank. A typical cycle of SBR consists of five sequences. First one, feed the raw water to reactor tank, then start the aeration for pre-programmed time period, stop the aeration and settling out the suspended solid. At fourth, fourth stage, decant in the treated water. And finally, idling for extracting excess sludge. No anaerobic, therefore cost of construction is less. No secondary clarifier, again cost of construction is less. Total process is taking place in one reaction tank. Therefore land requirement also less. Those are the advantages of SBR treatment. When you come to the disadvantages, more air volume needed, additional pumps required, therefore power consumption is higher than the earlier in SBR treatment. Now we are moving to treatment method number four. It is MBBR treatment. What is MBBR? Moving bed bioreactor treatment.
In the flow diagram, you can see again introduce secondary clarifier. But there's a special thing here in narration. To increase the surface area to develop microorganisms, a special PE media is introduced. It is called moving bed bioreactor media. It react, sorry, it reduces the reactor volume. But final quality of water is better than conventional activated sludge methods because volume of bacteria is higher than it. By changing anaerobic and aerobic combined treatment, Japanese has introduced a special treatment method, we known it as Jokosu. You know, as first treatment method, we introduce anaerobic plus aerobic. That means anaerobic and aerobic combined treatment. In this Jokosu method, anaerobic is combined with MBBR aeration. Therefore, aeration tank volume is reduced. This is a package type treatment unit. But POD, we can get around 20 milligram per liter and COD around 150 milligram per liter. In one package, you have anaerobic and MBBR unit. Now we move to our treatment method number five. It is MBR treatment. One of the most advanced treatment method in the industry. Here, biological and filtration combined method used to treat the wastewater. MBR is new type of wastewater treatment technology. We will discuss this method in deep after next couple of slides. Therefore, I am not explaining more here. In the next slide, we can see different water quality we can gain from different, different methods. In third column, anaerobic aerobic combined treatment as well as extended treatment, we can get inland surface water quality, POD below 30, COD below 250, TSS below 50. Instead of aerobic treatment, if we combine anaerobic treatment with wetland, we can get some water parameters. It's can be used for irrigation purpose. But for the wetland or anaerobic treatment, we need large area volume. The sophisticated treatment, what we discussed, MBR and SPR, they treat water better than inland surface water quality. BOD between 10 and 20, COD between 100 and 150. TSS between 15 and 30. Now, this table shows treatment method versus achievable level for domestic wastewater. 
anaerobic aerobic combined treatment extended duration as well as sbro mbbr mbr can treat what up to inland surface waters but if you want to discharge this water to road canals anaerobic aerobic combination treatment is not enough if so we have to go for the tertiary treatment to reuse in industries also this conventional treatment cannot be used without tertiary treatment sometimes sbro mbbr based water also cannot be reused in industries but if we go to the mbbr mbr treatment we can reuse immediately now today we are going to talk about this mbr treatment as you may know most of the countries are facing serious problems such as scarcity of usable water as well as water pollution due to industrialization therefore water conservation and reuse are most common concept in the world now best examples are israel singapore and kingdom of south arabia they collect all the base water possible treat and use for industries and farming they use mbr based waste water treatment for achieve their goals what is mbr based waste water treatment mbr stand for membrane bioreactor mbr process is a combination of biological waste water and membrane filtration biodegradable pollutants are reduced or decomposed using bacteria and microorganisms at the biological treatment and those solid or suspended particles separated from the membrane at the mbr process mixed liquor suspended solid mlss concentration concentration is maintained between 8000 to 12000 mg per liter hence bacteria concentration, concentration is very high in the system digestion process is more efficient and treated water can be gained at superior level on the other hand not only the high concentration of bacteria but also membrane pore size also supported to make good quality water there are two types of membranes in the industry all are submerged type uf membranes first one is hollow fiber second one is flat sheet membrane material of construct of hollow fiber membrane is pvda polyvinylidene difluoride flat sheet material is mostly pe polyethylene membrane pore size is vary between 0.04 to 0.05 micrometer in hollow fiber in flat sheet it is 0.1 to 0.2 micrometer main difference between hollow fiber and flat sheet are material pore size footprint and air volume required as you know in the conventional actuator sludge method solid liquid separation is performed by gravity in the settling tank and it is called clarification 
but the treated water doesn't have good clarity because of TSS in the water. But it is more enough to achieve parameter level of discharge inland surface waters. Such settling is not required in MBR process. Solid liquid separation is performed in a membrane modules. As this is high-tech filtration method, final water is transparent and can be reused for different industries. In the membrane module, it separates not only solids but also microbes. Therefore, this treated water can be considered as solid and bacteria free water. By referring the filtration spectrum, you can easily understand the substances that can be separated using membrane. MBR is under ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration pore size is 0 0.1, 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 micron. MBR pore size is 0 0.04. Therefore, you can see bacteria, virus, as well as colloidal silica can be removed by the MBR. If the water needs Further purified, RO, reverse osmosis or nanofiltration can be used after MBR. MBR is new era of wastewater treatment. It can treat any domestic wastewater, maybe home or apartment generated, hospitals or office complex generated, and can be treated up to reusable level. In other words, up to the drain water level. Not only the domestic, but also industrial wastewater from the industries like food and beverage, pharma, automobile can be treated up to reusable level from the MBR. Advantages of MBR. MBR system is a filtration facility with a five times higher MLSS concentration compared to conventional method. Then the MBR is filtration facility with high bacterial concentration. Then that is four to five times higher than FBBR and MBBR systems. In other words, MBR can perform four to five times higher than other methods. Therefore, producing high quality effluent, which can be discharged to environment or immediately reusable. Independent HRT and SRT. You know sludge is completely in the reactor tank in MBR. Therefore, as Conventional treatment, no need flocculation and settling. Settleability relates to retention of liquid in conventional treatment methods. Therefore, this treatment method is independent with HRT and SRT. Footprint is very small almost half from the conventional treatment. Then consistent performance. High concentration of biomass results in the efficient removal of biodegradable material. Then regulated flow, porosity of MBR, programmed air volume, and filtering rate make the consistent performance. 
then low sludge production, less sludge is created and disposed, less frequency, less sludge devoting. A sludge has high solid concentration, therefore, less sludge devoting. Those are the advantages of MDR. Now, move, move to disadvantages and inlet limitations. Engineer Surat, sorry for disturbing. Uh, can you please make the screen little bit bigger, like fit to page? How about now? Right. Is it okay, Sandru? Yes, now it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And sorry for the trouble. Okay. Now we are going to inlet limitations and disadvantages of MBR treatment. Limitations. We have to put screens. It may be bar or drum screen, but should be less than one millimeter because large debris has membrane damage potential. Oil and gas not exceed 150 milligram per liter as normal hexane extracts. Significantly flux decline may be observed in case of higher inlet oil and grease. Anti-forming agent. In the aeration and MBR train, forms can be regenerated. To prevent it, normally we use anti-forming anti agent is general practice. But Manufactured recommended only an alcohol based anti forming agent, not the silicon based anti forming agent. Disadvantages of MBR. The primary disadvantage of MBR system is the typically higher cap capital, capex, and opex, also replacement cost, than the conventional system. Maintenance is easy and computerized, but involved a cost for cleaning and fouling controls and eventual membrane replacement cost. There's a, there's a small technical error when I go to full screen. Can I proceed it like this? Uh, Engineer Surat, uh, can you please a uh, little bit uh, lower the size of the screen? A uh, little bit zoom out. Uh, once zoom out, I think now it's okay again. Right. In an earlier slide, we have discussed that, that we have discussed that there are two types of MBR, hollow fiber and flat sheet. Now we are moving to another classification. There are two types of MBR installations. One is integrated submerge, second one is external submerge. In the integrated submerge, membrane is installed inside the aeration tank. You can see in the first picture. Therefore, no need any separate tank for membrane 
and footprint get less. But in external submerged type, membrane is installed in a separate tank. Advantage is it in easy for maintenance and microorganism concentration is higher than integrated submerged type. And therefore performance also better than integrated submerged type. There's a small technical error to share in the slides. Anyway, we move to the next slide. External submerged membrane process. You can see in the flow diagram, the wastewater is filtered via a fine screen to remove large debris that could cause Harm to membrane. The wastewater next enters to the anoxic zone for the treatment of nitrogenous matters and phosphate. Then it's moved to anaerobic zone where microorganisms decompose the organic stuff. This process generates sludge and it introduced introduce into MBR where the membrane is separating solid and bacteria from water. Advantages of external submerged membrane system. Reduce fouling and clogging of membrane. Easy maintenance. And high quality water. Disadvantage. Space consuming than earlier one, that means integrated submerged one and higher energy consumption com compared to integrated submerged one. Integrated membrane bioreactor process. All basic treatments are similar to external membrane bioreactor. But MBR unit is located inside the aeration tank. Advantages of it is this type is compact and space saving design. Low energy consumption as same as low blower air needed. Disadvantages is potential for membrane fouling and clogging of the system.
now we are moving to flow diagram to see how the installation at site first tank we know that flow equalization tank as the mbr system is fundamentally operated at a constant flux a flow equalization tank is installed to mitigate fluctuation in the flow rate size of the eq tank differs differs according to the flow water flow rate and flow rate fluctuations the treatment capacity of the membrane uh engineer surat uh, yeah. we can uh, we cannot see your screen Now I think it's okay. Yes. I start again from the beginning. In this process, we should install equalization tank as the MBR system is fundamentally operated as, at a constant flux. The flow equalization tank is installed to mitigate fluctuation in the flow rates. Size of the EQ tank differs according to the raw water flow rate then. flow rate fluctuations the treatment capacity of the membranes etc then aeration tank as we discussed the above there are two type of mbr systems integrated mbr systems and separate mbr systems additional aeration tanks are required if the biological processing is not completed in the membrane tank it is for maintenance purpose circulation pumps then required to control sludge concentration in the reactor and membrane tanks if a process such as recycle nitrification is used multiple aeration tanks are required then membrane tank the tank in which modules are submerged is called membrane tank in integrated mbr system the membrane tank also serves as an aeration tank as the membrane tank has the highest sludge concentration of all the tanks it is effective to extract excess sludge from this tank then aeration blower this is the blower used to supply air for biological process into the aeration tank select the blower based on the volume of oxygen required for biological processing water depth and diffuser properties membrane scouring blower this is the blower used to supply air for cleaning clean modules select the blower based on the volume required for cleaning of modules water depth etc if the same blower is used for both biological and membrane scouring the volume of membrane scouring air it remains constant at the designated value then ras pump return activated sludge pump Flash pump is required to adjust the sludge concentration of the reactor and membrane tank. When using recycling nitrification, the pump also circulates nitrified water. The circulation rate determined primarily by the balance between the sludge concentration in the reactor and membrane tank and the target nitrogen removal rate. 
it is generally one to three times of the pro water volume. Then there's a pump called permeate pump. This pump is used to draw the treated water from the membrane module. Normally self-priming self -prime, self pump is used for this purpose. And permeate pumps are operated at constant flow. Chemical pump is there for, for deliver sodium hypochlorite for maintenance cleaning. And dilute pump is there used to send water to dilute sodium hypochlorite. Guys, can we hear? This is simple operating process. Throughout the filtration process, mm -hmm. aeration should be there. Same time, scouring air bubbling is continuously taking place. After every seven minutes, filtration is stopped and relaxation started. This seven and one operation procedure support to maintain the clean membrane surface. Normally chemical cleaning if needed, chemical cleaning do once a week. Chlorine CIP cleaning do once in three months and acid CIP is done once a year.
as i said earlier membrane surface cleaned by the flow of water and impact of water bubbles the thin and wide bundle of fibers with slack moves laterally in the spore in air flow for effective membrane surface cleaning what happened at filtration and relaxation mode at the 7 minute of filtration bubbles flow prevents sludge deposition on the membrane surface at the 1 minute of relaxation bubbles flow removes the sludge if deposited after days of operation little amount of sludge can be deposited therefore manufacturer recommended weekly chemical cleaning if not flux will be reduced and tmp will be increased trans membrane pressure will be increased in the maintenance cleaning it is done once a week use sodium hypochlorite for maintenance cleaning both filtration and aeration should switch off first then inject sodium hypochlorite for 30 minutes time after 30 minutes time switch on the filtration and air scouring cip cleaning at the cip cleaning again use sodium hypochlorite once in 3 months if we do the acid cleaning we can use citric acid once a year both filtration and aeration should be switched off before the cleaning chemical inject for 30 minutes keep for 90 minutes time then start air scouring after 30 minutes time filtration can be started you can see chemical injection for 30 minutes is yellow color in the first picture all other parts are closed after 30 minutes time it soaked for 90 minutes at that time all the flat parts are closed all the parts are parts are black color this slide is for your information while inlet and outlet flow rates are same return sludge volume maintain 2 to 4 times however it depends on mlss concentration of the reactor tank and mbr tank again we can say mbr system has three main benefits space saving improved water quality ease of maintenance space saving 
in conventional actuator sludge system we need aeration tank clarifier and filtration just like sand filter if we introduce mbr we can remove clarifier and filtration system and most important thing is aeration tank volume can be reduced by almost by half this is one city in korea first and second stage of their stp they did conventional actuator sludge method for 70 cube 70000 cubic meters per day and 80000 cubic meters per day thereafter in third and second fourth steps they did mbr treatment plants for total 70000 cubic meters per day you can see the area they get for mbr treatment and conventional treatment it is clearly show the amount of land used then plant upgrade if you have already if you have a actuator sludge plant conventional actuator sludge plant and if you need to upgrade or if you need to double the capacity you can use same aeration tank without clarifier but your output water quality is far better than actuator sludge method in next slide you can see the example from myanmar earlier they had 5 500 cubic meter per day plant now with the mbr they move to 2100 cubic meter plant with the same aeration tank mbr conserve precious water resources mbr treated water mbr treated water can be used with ro or without ro it mean mbr treated water can be reused directly for toilet flushing floor washing cooling towers and boilers if the tds tds is within the limit mbr treated water can be reused along with ro for production process boilers and other industrial usage also further mbr can be used as tertiary treatment of activator sludge process this example come from ksa kingdom of south africa south arabia earlier they had desalinated sea water ro plant and used that water for industrial purpose then industrial waste water send it to environment through conventional actuator sludge system but now they use mbr treatment for industrial waste water treatment that water reused to industrial city followed by ro plant 
Due to this solution, client is able to conserve water and reduce the huge power consumption through desalination. Therefore, what we ask is, if they all can, why can't we? Thank you. Uh, Engineer Sura, uh, we have received uh, some uh, questions from the audience. So, uh, yes. uh, can we uh, answer for them? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, first one is uh, apartment complex has a STP plant which the tanks are sealed, but it keeps uh, emitting bad smell. Uh, can you please explain the possible causes to happen and actions uh, which we could take? Uh, can you ask the question again, please? Uh, apartment complex has a STP plant which, uh, which the tanks are sealed. Uh, that means uh, all, 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 everything uh, is sealed, but it keeps uh, emitting bad smell. Can you please explain possible causes to happen the actions uh, which can, uh, which we can take? Yeah, uh, all the tanks are sealed. Mean uh, there is no secondary treatment, as I explained in the first treatment method, B because if the anaerobic is there. There should be an aeration because anaerobic create only, only 60 to 70 percent. And anaerobic produce methane also. Therefore, if there is no aeration, this bad smell can happen. Therefore, I think better to introduce aeration for this system. Okay. Uh... So uh, for that, uh, do we need to do any uh, modification? Yeah, uh, if there is no aeration or no aeration pumps or blowers, we have to put aeration pumps or blowers, uh, but we have to see whether tanks available availability or uh, we have to construct new tanks. Okay, okay. So... Uh, next one is what are the ways to treat high TDS level if you want uh, uh, about 3000 ppm? High TDS? Yeah, high TDS. Yeah, actually in uh, wastewater treatment, we, can, uh, we can't reduce TDS because it's total dissolved solids. Uh, if the if wastewater or freshwater has high TDS like 3000 ppm, we have to use RO plant, reverse osmosis plant. If it is wastewater, we have to treat first for wastewater and then uh, we have to send it through RO plant to reduce TDS, total dissolved solids. Okay, uh, next one is, uh, is there any practical examples uh, where these modern techniques have uh, been used in Sri Lanka? Like example project, uh, the uh, question uh, uh, looking for us uh, some examples uh, recently used in Sri Lanka. Yeah, I think uh, it is not a problem to uh, disclose their names, customs names. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, in we Enviro Water did some plants for uh, Elephant House, uh, Hotel Ranmal Ramadia in Moratua. Canola Hospital in Andhradapura, Hemas Manufacturing in Dangkotua, Blue Ocean Apartments in Nugegoda, Ceylon Chocolate in Pallikali. And these days we are construct a plant in Rockland District is Hanwell. As I know, there are more than 20 plants in Sri Lanka, both in hollow fiber and flat sheet membranes. Uh, next one is what are the local guidelines or rules uh, for the wastewater treatment for the new uh, for a new building? The treatment guidelines means that uh, treated water re quality regulations. 
Yes, call, call it regular. Yeah, uh, it it has not yet changed, but the ISA regulation, I think, is it's not yet implement that all the houses need their own treatment facility. As per my knowledge, it is not yet implemented yet, but uh, CEA, Central Environmental Authority, has not yet uh, changed the earlier regulations because if we discharge wastewater to the rainwater canals, that rainwater canal should be connected to flow in water body. We can treat up to inland surface water quality, that means BOD30 and COD250, can discharge to rainwater canals, but it should be connected to flow in water body. Uh, and also, I, as I remember, and also there, uh, there should be a, a minimum flow rate, uh, I think uh, eight times yes. of the discharge, right? Minimum flow rate means uh, that in the flow in water body, there yes. should be a dilution factor. That means uh, if we send a thousand liters per day, that flow in water body should have a eight thousand liters. Per eight thousand. Yes. Yeah. For the one, one to eight dilution. And uh, our next one is: uh, What is the ozone water treatment? Is it is still uh, in use? Yeah, ozone wastewater treat. Uh, not only the water treatment, also in use used for wastewater treatment also, uh, especially in uh, textile industries, yes. uh, also used for wastewater industry. But uh, to get the uh, total terrified, that means total pure water, uh, ozone has to install with MBR. That means uh, uh, last, uh, last stage, there will be a uh, MBR treatment plant. Yes, if you go to the uh, reuse, because ozone treatment is so expensive. Yes. Therefore, definitely we have to reuse that one. If so, uh, better to go for MBR also. Okay, uh, I think uh, more that ozone or treatment is uh, mainly used in uh, textile industry. Textile industry, but uh, not popular in Sri Lanka. And uh, next one is uh, uh, what what are the power electricity requirement for the treatment plant? Uh, will that be a concern for a country? So. Yes. Uh, if we go for the what is called MBR treatment, comparatively, it is power consumption is high. But in other way, it is the most environmental friendly treatment method because we can reuse all the water after treatment. Okay. That means if you want, we want to meet the required uh, treatment levels, the best option is MBR, but our energy consumption is uh, comparatively high. Comparatively high. Okay. So, actually, next question is uh, which method consumes the less power? SBR, MBR, and uh, MBBR. So, so what is the... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, if we go for the MBBR, MBBR, power consumption of MBBR is lesser than SBR. In SBR, we use uh, additional couple of pumps for decanting, uh, and sludge removing. Therefore, power consumption of SBR is higher than MBBR. Uh, as I said earlier, power consumption of MBR is higher than SBR or MBBR. Okay, that means the low, lower is uh, MBBR. Lowest one is MBBR, then yeah. SBR, then MBBR. MBR. MBR. Okay. Uh, next question is uh, uh, can we use uh, uh, MBR for uh, efflow water treatment. Sorry, I couldn't get uh, efflow water treatment, uh, like uh, textile efflow water. Yes, yes. 
Uh, I have exa example. Uh, we did a plant with uh, Hydronautics, that means it's a USA company in Bangladesh uh, for ANE uh, textile wastewater treatment to MBR. But after the chemical treatment only put the that means pre-treatment is chemical treatment. Mm -hmm. Thereafter only we put the uh, MBR. Uh, is that viable with uh, compared to uh, that uh, investment and OPEX uh, cost? Because uh, in Bangladesh uh, uh, we can uh, find ground uh, we can find groundwater very easily. Yeah, uh, problem is groundwater is we can find groundwater very easily, but quality of the groundwater is not good. Not good uh, in the Chittagong, the especially in Chittagong area. Uh, TDS is around always about 2000. Okay. And, uh, and ferrous content is very high. I have, I a, I have experience that uh, raw water ferrous uh, content is 72 ppa. Okay. So uh, I think uh, you are uh, uh, talking about the industrial sort, right? Yes. Okay. So Virginia Zurab, uh, these are the questions from the audience. So I think uh, now I'm going to uh, uh, we can uh, we can uh, wind up the session and uh, uh, next uh, we can go for the vote of thanks. Can you hear me, Kosha? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, from my side, I think uh, I try to give uh, uh, give uh, no, or share my knowledge uh, with you in my uh, best level. But uh, technically, there was some problems occurred. Uh, anyway. Uh, if you have any confusion or anything to ask, please contact to Kaushal. Then I can uh, reply or answer for you. Thank you very much, all. With that, it's time for the token of appreciation. Engineer Surat Selviratna, please accept our virtual token of appreciation for your contribution as a resource person in today's webinar on advanced water waste water treatment for modern facilities. Organized by Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee, Institute of Engineers, Sri Lanka. So let's move to the word of thanks session. Good evening to all of you. I'm Sanjeevika Ratnayaka. Uh, on behalf of the Dean Service Sectional Committee of ISL, I would like to take this opportunity to express sincere thanks to Engineer Surat Sanviratna for accepting our invitation and uh, conducting a very informative webinar today. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, next, I would like to thank uh, Engineer Isuru Lakmal, Chairman of the Building Service Engineering Sectional Committee of ISL. Uh, my sincere thank goes to ISL staff members for providing the infrastructure facilities for today's webinar. Engineer Kusal Patirana, sorry, Engineer Kaushal Patirana and Engineer Asanka Sandaru, thank you very much for organizing this knowledge sharing session. Um, I also thank all the wonderful audience gathered here today. Last but not least, thank you all the members of Building Service Section Committee.